So the shortlist is complete. Seven finalists selected by the Royal Institute of British Architects to contend for the 2022 prize. And they are Seabreeze, the luxury beach hut built to cope with the worst of British seaside weather. The Red House, a challenging work of art that pushed its builders to their limits. The Dutch Barn, a dramatic barn transformation built to share with the public. Muse House, deep retrofit, fusing energy efficiency and luxury in a glamorous period package. The punchy pioneering blend of three architectural styles that is Surbiton Springs. Suffolk Cottage, the thrifty, inventive eco-extension of a brick and flint building. And the Library House, a small but exquisitely crafted gem. All seven are remarkable, but only one can win. This year's shortlist is full of projects which are adventurous, freewheeling kinds of buildings, you know? Full of vim and vigour. But which of them is going to be first over the line, hmm? past the post? I'd like to give you a clue, but, um, sorry. Oh, all right then. It's colourful. It's unconventional. It is. The Red House. With bricks that are trying to head off in different directions, walls that bend and curve, and a staircase that's, well, nuts. It's as mind-boggling a work of postmodern art as I've ever seen. Somehow, handmade, uneven bricks have been persuaded to lie in perfect, straight, horizontal courses that line up precisely with upright ones, even as they bend round curves. The shapes of the building are just as mesmerizing. It has oversized chimneys, an exaggerated pitched roof and huge oversailing eaves picked out in an unexpected colour. Inside, you're greeted by a staggeringly complex staircase, which takes straight pieces of ash and makes them bend round impossibly tight curves. I'm here to break the glad tidings to its owner, Edward. Hello. Hello, Kevin. Welcome. Thank you very much. What a grand thing it is. It was kind of too, you know, irresistible, really. Yes. Yeah. And I also have an important reason for being here to tell you that you've won. Seriously? Seriously. Wow. Yeah. Good, eh? Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. You've won. <laughs> this is the house of the year 2022. Oh, my God. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? And the, the house is so unusual and so strong. See, this gorgeous, slinky staircase is as glamorous as anything from the 1930s. You feel like you're in a film. But actually, it, it, it's not about that at all. It's, this is a staircase designed around human beings, around need, around solid handrails, not thin, silly sheets of glass. This is a staircase for all generations. This is a staircase that's future-proofed. We are, you know, getting into the ageing society. This house more forward thinking about uh, uh, design for uh, lifetime home standard. Already built in lift, even though they don't need a lift right now at all. Then a uh, wider corridor, so it's really friendly. Because of the focus placed on lifetime mm -hmm. homes in the public housing sector, there's a sense that it is not compatible with the kind of higher architectural ambitions. You don't have to compromise. House can be you know, future-proofed and yet uh, joyful and then uh, beautiful. Amidst a cost of living crisis, a, yes. an environmental crisis, yes. and, and coming out of COVID, yes. play hasn't really figured very much. Yeah, true. Yeah, so now we have to be uh, enjoy <laughs> yeah. whatever the circumstances is. You know, I think the genius of this place is just how well it answers everything asked of it. It reaches into the past, you know, it grabs all these architectural ideas and languages and it, it sort of projects them as one single coherent thing into the future. It says to its occupants, oh, by the way, yeah, come and live here and enjoy it and love it, but do so for the rest of your days because I am so adaptable. And goodness me, in times which are darker and more desperate, playfulness, that is much needed.